Now that we've created response groups and response group queues, let's start out by creating a workflow. So on the workflow tab here under response groups, I'm gonna click this link to create or edit a workflow. I'm gonna select my front end pool. Now I click okay, this is going to take me out to a web page. So notice that it's launched Internet Explorer and it's going out to the RGS config application and IIS on my front end pool server. So the tool to configure the response groups is actually a web-based tool. So it'll take you outside of the control panel. And from here, we have two options. We can create a simple hunt group. So simple routing to a hunt group. So a very basic interactive is really the one you're probably going to be interested in. This is where you call in and hear an audio uh, response, whether it's text to speech or something you've recorded and basically prompt the user for input, uh, say or press one for sales and so on. Let's go ahead and create an interactive response group workflow. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. This is gonna take me into a new interface. What I'll do here is I first need to define a SIP URI for the response group. Since I have a small environment, I'm gonna keep it simple and just call it RGS at interface ttlabs.com. And we'll just call this the interface response group service, or we'll just say response group. That's good enough. Then I need to specify a line URI. So this needs to be an E164 format. So 1602301, and we'll say 7001. And then you can format the display number. So I'll do a plus one, 602301701. You can put a description in there if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and use English for my text-to-speech conversions. When somebody calls in, so on step three, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a welcome message. So I could type anything in here in text-to-speech that I wanted to, or I could record my own audio uh, prompt, select this option here, and it'll give me an option to upload that file. So let's go ahead and do this text-to-speech. I'm just gonna copy the sample text out here. So when you dial into the response group, the first thing that'll happen is, is the system will say, thank you for calling. We appreciate your business and we will be with you shortly. And it actually does a pretty good job of doing this text to speech conversion, but you may want to consider uploading your own professional recording. So let's continue going down here. Now, step four, you specify your business hours. I'm in the Arizona time zone. And I'm just going to go ahead and say we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But if you only wanted to have certain options available from eight to five, Monday through Friday, you have the ability to do that. You can use this custom schedule, configure your hours here for each day of the week that you want to be available for business hours. And then during business hours, you can have a specific message played. And then outside of those business hours, you can decide kind of a fallback. You know, if they've called at 9 p.m. at night, you can either forward to voicemail or just disconnect the call. So that's kind of a nice little option there. So I'm just going to go with the defaults here and say that we're always open. Step five, you can kind of do something similar where you can specify holidays. So if you were to configure this and, and say maybe during Christmas, you get a different option and we can tell you, hey, sorry, we missed your call and maybe we'll send you over to voicemail. So you have some options there to configure all the holidays. On step six, this is the actual music the user is going to hear when they're waiting to be routed to an agent. So the idea is you call into the response group from the outside world. You'll get that first welcome message. Thank you for calling. Then you're going to hear the options that we're going to configure later on. Uh, and once I've selected an option, then we're going to hear the hold music, whether it's the default, which is the default music on hold that anybody in Link would hear, or a specific music file that you're going to upload. So from there, let's continue looking at this. So now finally in step seven is where we get into prompting the user. So the user will hear the following text or recorded message. So again, text to speech or an audio file that you upload, but essentially we can say, for sales, press or say one. And then you can say for support, press or say two. And what we're gonna do here is key off of this, this first sentence here. So if they say one, we're gonna fill this out here. So if they say one or press one on the dial pad, then we have some options. So we can ask another question, again, text to speech, or we can just select the queue. In this example, I'm gonna keep this very basic. Now, this graphical interface will only let you nest these so far. You may have called into several large companies and gotten lost in one of these IVRs, so the, the recommendation is to keep it as simple as possible. 
And this graphical interface will only let you go so far. So if you wanted to go very deep, you'd have to go into the Link Server Management shell, depending on your, your requirements. But anyways, I'm gonna keep this simple. So if they say or press one, I'm gonna send them over to sales. So that's the first portion for this step, that's response one. So the second piece would be response two. So another valid response would be saying to or dialing to. So pretty straightforward here. Again, we can ask another question or just send to the support queue in this case. That's what I'm gonna do. So again, keeping this very simple, and that's real basic, that's all I'm gonna set up for this particular response group workflow. Uh, I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can see there's multiple responses. You can go up to four. Again, if you need to go further than that, then you'll wanna drop into the link server management shell. So let me hit deploy here. And we'll return home and then we'll see that we have that particular workflow configured. Now, if we go back and edit this, just to review here, remember that we have uh, a DID associated to this response group at this point. So since we have enterprise voice enabled, a user from the PSTN could dial straight into this. So this could be my main office number. When they call in, they'll get the two prompts, press one for sales or two for support. Now also it has a SIP URI, so federated partners can dial this, do an audio federated call directly to this SIP URI as well. But that's basically what needs to be done in order to create a workflow based on your existing queues and groups.